So when and how to use your uh, spindle to pivot point ruler and its jig. These are really pieces of diagnostic equipment and are absolutely essential every time you align your cantilever assembly with the Wally tractor. If, however, you find that you're not able to reach your chosen effective length arc on the Wally tractor with your stylus, then when you reach out to me, I'm going to ask you, what's the distance between your spindle to your pivot point? So we've machined these with laser, cut these with laser, and it's a very nice tight, low tolerance fit between the jig and the ruler. And you slide it onto the spindle and make sure that the ruler is pretty close to parallel with the surface of the platter before you take your reading. And then when you do take the reading, look straight down. This is a little too high for me right now. Look straight down and take the reading to the center of the pivot point. Now, many tone arms don't have a marker in the center of the pivot housing to identify the, uh, the, the vertical bearing axis. So uh, what do you do? Do this. Take the measurement to the, it, most of you will have a, a cylindrical pivot housing. You take two readings. One, the distance from the spindle to the closest part of that pivot housing. And again, a second reading from the spindle to the furthest part of that pivot housing. Take those two figures and average them. And that's the center. So a note about the head shell screw slots. Um, these offer you a degree of freedom in order to attain your functional effective length. Um, you see, there is no industry standard uh, there for cartridge manufacturers to determine what's the distance between the center of the, the head shell screws and where the stylus sits further ahead. I've measured that anywhere from seven and a half to nine and a half plus millimeters. So this offers a degree of freedom to accommodate that. Furthermore, the other function that these uh, slots offer is, is to offer some forgiveness in the event that your pivot to spindle dimension is off by a little bit. What, whatever effective length arc you use isn't in and of itself particularly important. As long as you can reach one of them, and trace it with your stylus the, with the entirety of the arc, then you're fine. Um, so if, say, your arm was, is specified online as being 235 uh, millimeter uh, effective length, but the only one you can get to is 237, that's fine. Use the 237 as long as you can follow it all the way along the arc. What's more important, of course, is that you align that cantilever properly at points number two through five, or if you're using the new record collection arcs, uh, points C through F. So a couple tips on helping you see all of the fine detail that we need to see when we're aligning a cantilever and a stylus. It can be tough for people like me, certainly, who need readers. Um, first tip, uh, you can always increase your magnification by having a second pair of readers. Um, I know that with my vision, I'm a certain rating at reading distance, but cl close up, I actually do need a higher magnification, so that really helps. Another alternative is to get a product like this, maybe 25, 30 bucks at tops with changeable magnifying um, uh, lenses here for different uh, levels of magnification. That can be nice. And they also have uh, a light. I've never used the light, but that could be very helpful. Another helpful point, uh, the magnifying glass that comes with the Wally tractor, you can lay it on its edge. And then you align it visually for finding each one of the null positions and the points of maximum angular error so that it can be easier. We've got one, one hand free to then drop the stylus to the right position. Just move this as needed. Another important tip to consider is having adequate lighting. Very important. Have as much 
natural lighting as possible and supplement it with a flashlight, especially when aligning the cantilever. I use a flashlight to come from the side and then behind and change the elevation a little bit and I'll eventually find that perfect spot where it all lights up. As long as this is in focus and your lighting is good, you should see it just fine. And again, don't forget about doubling up. I frequently do it. So for those of you who are still vision challenged after trying the other options already suggested, you can invest in a relatively inexpensive otoscope, which is a USB microscope, real low power. You want real low power. And you set it up on a mechanism that'll hold it in place. This is a, um, an XY stage right here, and this is a Z stage to control the Z axis. Um, the challenge is that you really want low power and you cannot trust the ratings from some of these manufacturers. Um, this is a Super Eyes brand and I do not trust the ratings, but it is inexpensive. Uh, it's too powerful. There is no way, there, this is right now at the minimum magnification, and there's no way that that is 1x. That's more like, particularly on this size, monitor this has got to be 20 to 40 at least i, I don't i don't know but this is a, what you're looking at are the etch marks and the reflections of the x mark etch marks so they're reasonably well lined up right now and it's been too much time doing this and then uh, you'll see the cantilever coming here and all i'm doing to make that shift that image um, nice and smooth is adjusting this dial right here on the xy stage If you own a Wally skater, I suggest you inspect the health of your arm before you use the Wally tractor. We do that because, unfortunately, I find all too often that tone arms have internal horizontal forces within the arm pushing it one way or the other. Usually it's because of twisted tone arm wires. Um, sometimes those tone arm wires, if they're outside of the arm, can be redressed. Uh, if they're inside of the tone arm and they're pushing it enough, you'll definitely want to send it back for service. But it's nice to be able to, if you're, gonna, if you're going to communicate with the tone arm manufacturer about service needs, then it's nice to be able to tell them exactly what's going on. And the Wally Skater will give you a quantifiable way to do that. So with the, um, with the arm, um, for more detail, of course, you've go to the, on this uh, approach, go to the uh, videos that I've got on this, this YouTube channel for the Wally Skater. But basically what the, the step we care about here that I like to engage in before using the Wally tractor is I'm looking for internal forces in the arm, pushing it one way or the other. This arm's great because the yellow line and the blue line are coming down virtually identically with each other. If you've got three or 4%, native to the tone arm, don't worry about it too much. Um, that's comp you can compensate for that with the anti-skate me mechanism. Of course, the anti-skate mechanism is off right now. That's what I care to see, if the arm's got any horizontal forces of its own. Uh, but if, if the arm does have uh, some more significant forces, five, six percent or greater, then what's gonna happen is that when that cantilever starts coming down to meet the, the Wally tractor. Um, once it, once it, the vertical tracking force is applied, it's gonna cause that cantilever to shift one way or another visually uh, because of those horizontal forces. And once it's shifted visually, that's the angle you're gonna try to compensate for. That would uh, offer you a completely misaligned cantilever. You want to remove those or remove the influence of those horizontal forces in the tone arm. And you do that by using the cueing lever while you, um, while you align the cantilever. So you adjust for those forces if they exist and if you can't get it repaired by using the cueing lever. What you do is you use the cueing lever 
to just hover the stylus above the surface of the Wally tractor. Don't let it touch. Just hover it. As soon as you let it touch, the vertical tracking force starts coming into play and it'll cause the, the uh, arm to start sliding left or right, depending on which way those forces are coming. This is also, this tip, by the way, is also very applicable to really low hung bodied cartridge. Some of the Koetsus um, uh, are certainly of, of this nature. You can barely see the cantilever. Well, the trick is to just, using your cueing lever, just hover that stylus just above the, above the um, Wally tractor and you'll see more of it. So if you've got a linear tracking tone arm, it is just as important, perhaps arguably even more so important, to have your cantilever and stylus aligned properly than if you have a pivoted arm. Why? Because with a pivoted arm, if I got it off a little bit, I got a good chance of it at least being right once on the arc. On a linear tracking tone arm, I'm going to be off all the time. So you'll want to get that stylus aligned to the radial line perfectly, get it situated right on that radial line, and you'll want um, to align the cantilever very properly against any one of the uh, uh, etched markings. And also with the linear trekking tone arm, assessment of the health of that bearing by using the Wally skater is also very helpful to confirm that the carriage assembly isn't pushing the cantilever one way or the other, which would then cause, just as with a pivoted tone arm, cause your cantilever alignment to be off.